Okay, the atheist, the reason why you might have a hard time sometimes with them is because they will always resort to science as their answer. That's the thing. So how do you know that your belief is right? Oh, because unless I see it scientifically, then I know it's true. That's what they believe. They believe science is the answer to everything. Uh, you got to realize this. Science does not show all the truth, you got to understand. So I don't know if this is new to you, but science, this is important to remember. This is how you can win in the argument. Because every time you argue with the atheist, if he's going to resort to his own evidence, he will retreat always to science. He's not going to say science. But you can tell from his language that everything that he argues to defend his belief is going to resort to science itself, something you experiment, something you observe, something that's proven and tested. So that's their final authority. But you got to realize this, science doesn't show all the truth. Just because it's science doesn't mean you get all the truth. Didn't you realize that? You might say, no, science, it does show all the truth. No, you can't. You know why they won't believe in God? So here's Christianity. We believe God exists. But why do we believe God exists? Well, from science, what we could argue is probably the laws of thermodynamics. We can argue the complexity of what we study, that it cannot be by evolution. There had to be intelligent design behind it. We can argue that way. But here's the thing, is that God, he cannot be tested, experimented with. Because why? God is outside of the physical bounds of the universe. Science is observing, testing things within the universe, the framework of the universe. God is outside of that. So because of that, that's why the atheists, they will not believe uh, the agnostics. They'll have difficulty believing as well concerning Christianity. Because God is outside of science. Because remember, this is their hardcore. So I'm coloring this so you can get their hardcore block here. So what you need to do to prove there is God, you got to tell them this. Truth is not limited to scientific arguments here. That's the basis of God. You know how, why we can believe there is God? Okay, so I know it's because we can use scientific arguments. Some of it can show it. We can use historical evidences. And uh, we can show them a script from the Bible. The Bible is the ultimate proof and evidence. But you got to realize this. All those things are based upon one thing. It's all based on logic. It's reasonable. That's why. Look at Acts chapter 18, verse 4. And he, what? Reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. And what? Persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Look at verse 14. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, If for a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. See, these people believe in reason. Look at verse 19. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he entered into the synagogue and what? Reasoned with the Jews. See, it's based on logical reasoning. Look at chapter 24, verse 25. Chapter 24, verse 25. See, use your head. Why do you believe in science? Because it's logical. See that? That's why. Why would you believe in historical evidences, mathematical evidences, philosophical arguments, etc., etc.? Because of logic. It's logical. See? It's logical. We're going to look at Acts chapter 24, verse 25. And as he, what? reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Paul was reasoning. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. You got to understand this, folks. Your God, he is reasonable. Didn't you know that? Your God is reasonable. Not only that, Christians are supposed to answer reasonably. Your faith, your Christianity has logical reasoning. If you can't do that, then don't blame God and don't blame the atheist and agnostic if they stump you. Look at that, 1 Peter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a what? Reason of the hope that is in you. Go to Isaiah chapter 1. 
Isaiah chapter 1. Even your God is reasonable. Your God is a reasonable God. He's of reason. That's the reason why we can believe in these things. Because it's based on logical reasoning. Because think about it, folks. Okay, why would you believe the Bible anyway, huh? Think about it. Why did you believe in the Bible anyway? Because it's just the Bible? I mean, I could do that with the Quran. I could do that with the Bhagavad Gita. I could do that with the Book of Mormon. Why is it the Bible is our final authority? Why did you believe that to begin with? Because of logical reasoning. You realize there is no greater evidence, no greater authority, power that backed up any other book or science textbook than the Word of God. Amen. See, so it all rooted down to logic. So we saw these verses. I'm going to write these verses down because some of the people probably didn't see it. So we saw Paul. That's why he's became a great defender of faith. Acts chapter 18, verse 4 and 19. We saw that. We also saw it at Acts chapter 24, and we also saw it at verse 25. We also saw it in other verses in 1 Peter chapter 3, and then we saw it at verse 15. Christians are supposed to argue for reasoning. And then we saw it in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Your God is a reasonable God. The Bible says, come now, let us what? Reason together, saith the Lord. So you'll notice right here, God is for logical reasoning. Do you think your God is stupid? No, God is never stupid. He has something way ahead of you, a hundred steps ahead. Now, the thing is, is, that's the point. How you can prove truth is by logic. That's a fact even with science, because they wouldn't believe in science to begin with if it didn't, have, if it didn't make logical sense. Why can they believe what they observe and test and experiment and theorize? Because it makes logical sense. Everything is based on logic. That's the point. So you got to understand this. Science cannot prove, but logical reasoning can. You might say, no, science can prove. Here's the thing. Science doesn't show all the truth. That's important to understand. And what I mean by that is that science doesn't prove everything. Doesn't prove all the truth. If you think so, you're very gullible and ignorant. It's only a branch of proof. It's only a branch of proof. Just like history is a branch of proof. Mathematics is a branch of proof, et cetera, et cetera. So, philo philosophical arguments, a branch of it. See? It doesn't prove everything. And that's what you need to do. You need to demolish this. So then when they give you the burden of scientifically showing, scientifically showing, you got to tell them this. You don't have to base it off of science. It's based on logic. And if they make science so much of their God, then you can demolish them with this. Okay? Here are several reasons why science can't prove everything. You know why it can't prove everything? It's going to show these following points right here. One is logical and math mathematical truths. Logical and mathematical truths. Because think about it. How can you even do physics without math? <laughs> Look at that. See, how can you do physics without math? See, it depends upon math. So you got to realize this. Not all the time is a science. It can be logical and mathematical truths as well. They can prove something. So, there are times that science can't prove something but something mathematical could prove it to be true. Here's another thing right here. What about metaphysical truths? Metaphysical truths. Can science, can you test and observe and experiment something like this? No. You can't do that. So you're going to, metaphysical truths as well. Science can't prove that one. Sometimes it might on some things, but not everything. Science cannot prove love, for example. It can't prove the emotion of love. Maybe it could work on the workings of the body and test the hormones and all that. But it can't prove true, genuine love. It can't even prove the number three as well, you got to understand. The number three is something that we conjured up and put up with. Consciousness, what you're actually dreaming, what you envision, can science test and observe that and depict it and show it on a TV screen? This is what he's exactly dreaming. No. Does that mean it's not the truth on what you dreamed about? I dreamed that I ate food yesterday. Well, science can't prove that, so you must be lying. No, I dreamed it. I know what I dreamed. See that? 
or something in your mind as well, what you're thinking. Can science prove that, what you're thinking right now? Some of you are probably daydreaming right now, not paying attention to the Word of God. But I can't scientifically prove that. So see, there are certain metaphysical truths, that's the point. There are certain metaphysical truths that science cannot prove. Here's another thing. What about ethics? Can science prove ethical values? No. That's something that we in our own innate nature make ethical values on. Oh, no, there's no such thing as right and wrong. No, 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 don't give me that bull. Otherwise, you wouldn't have laws in this country, okay? You're the one who drew the ethic. I don't care how hardcore of an atheist you are. You voted in for somebody as president, I'm sure. You, uh, you disagreed with somebody's uh, political belief, uh, some kind of uh, moral belief, some kind of value. You didn't like that. Especially if somebody robbed you of your belongings and killed your family member, I'm sure you're going to feel, I was wronged. Wait, wait a minute. I thought you didn't believe in the ethical values here. <laughs> See that? But science can't prove that. Can science prove that? No, science can't prove that. That's something you yourself came. And guess what? Well, then how can we come up with it? Because anyone can put up their value, right? Ah, see, that's why. Unless you believe in God, who made the ethical values for you, then you can believe it. Okay, well, anyway, that's just a side note. What about aesthetic values? How do you know that the art artist work is poor? How do you know that the artist work is great? How can you prove that the television show is five stars or the television show is boring? Can science scientifically prove that? No. Aesthetic values can't be proven. Science can't prove that. Can I give you the best one? Here's the best one. And I'm going to give a different color for this one, shall we? This is the best one. You ready? You know what science can't even prove? Science cannot even prove itself. Science. Didn't you know that? No, what, what is this? This guy is stupid. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No, some, you got to understand this. Science cannot even prove itself at times. Why do you think, look, if you're a scientist who's done so many experiments, you can even agree with me on this one. Why do you call it scientific theory? You know why you call it a scientific theory? Because you realize no matter how many times you may have developed the hypothesis and experimented and tested it, you can be wrong later on. You might say, no, I don't believe that. Then you're not a scientist. You must be a dummy. No offense. Okay? Every scientist knows that. Why is that? Because they are always open to the possibility out there that their experiment or their hypothesis can be wrong later on in life, no matter how many times they experimented. One of the greatest evidences is Albert Einstein. You know how much he's like a god among scientists today? But guess what? His th uh, his theory concerning light, theory of relativity that related to light, they now realize that's wrong. Scientists now realize that's wrong. I don't know if you knew that, but that should be common now among the science community. This was years ago, too, years ago. And Albert Einstein, he's like the, the pinnacle of scientists. Is your IQ higher than Albert Einstein? <laughs> And you think that when Einstein gets it wrong, you won't get it wrong? Wow, some guy you are. So you see right here, science cannot even prove itself. You'd be surprised. That's why what do scientists do? We can only believe in that for now. Why? Because we don't see a better hypothesis, a better experiment yet for that. So because there is no better explanation, better truth than that, we're going to hold to what we currently scientifically experimented as truth. That's their belief. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Aren't you accusing us when we think this is the best explanation for creating everything and for life and ethical values, and you accuse us of having, uh, oh, you're just finding some uh, convenient excuse for that because there's no other argument out there. Whoa, you, you, you hypocrite. You hypocrite, you. You're going by this current scientific theory because this is the best one we got right now. There's not a better one out there yet. So we're going to hold to what we have right now. Who's a hypocrite now? All right, so you see right here, the point is logic. So the point is this. It doesn't matter what kind of pro logical proof you have. History, science, mathematical, 
philosophical, et cetera, et cetera. You got to understand this. Everything, no matter how strong the evidence is, even, even if you bring it up in a court of law, you got to realize this. People will always find something to critique it on. They will always find something to critique. That's just life. So the best thing to do, which is a scientific thing to do, all right? You do this in experiments. You weigh the evidences, and you go by what's the best evidence. What's the best evidence? And I know you don't want to say it. That's the best evidence. Because I'm not going to go through all of it, but there are so many historical evidences of people who recorded they saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's too much of history where archaeologists dug up findings and it matched perfectly with the Bible. There's too many scientific experiments that you do that you realize it could not just happen by chance. There had to be some intelligent design behind it. When you study the laws of thermodynamics, you realize there is no other explanation to creating the universe except something outside of the universe that had to put it in there. You might as well call that God, right? There is no other explanation for the mathematical statistics of the probability of the, all the prophecies in the Bible Amen. and all the statements in the Word of God. Amen. There is no other book that has overwhelming manuscript evidence. Not even all the science textbooks in the world have more manuscript evidence than the Bible. The Bible has overwhelmingly 5,000 manuscript evidence. It's over 5,000. What more can I say after that? And also, not only that, there is no other philosophical, logical, philosophical argument either. How are you going to argue for ethics, huh, for one example? See, weigh the evidence. Christianity triumphs. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching was a blessing to the hearers. Dismiss us now with your blessing. Help us to go home safely and help us throughout the rest of the days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everybody.